Hi guys, it's Rilo and Sonia from Relentless Pursuit Ministries. Um, we're serving a fear and vaccine and what a privilege um, just to share the word of God with you. Um, a couple of days ago, we did a devotion on Benaya, you remember? Um, killing that lion. So we just want to do a follow up on that one tonight about fear. But before we go further, let's just, just pray and, and ask God's blessing upon us. Father, thank you so much for this for, 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 for this moment that we can just come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for this message that we're about to share. Father, I pray for everyone that's going to listen to this, that your word will be just so sharp and so strong tonight, Lord, to break through every barrier in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I would love just to um, give you guys a, a topic first of all. And the topic that I want, uh, want to share with you tonight is just, you know, simply fear needs to be locked down. Not the Christians, fear needs to be locked Amen. down. And I'm going to start off with a scripture reading in just one verse. And um, it's Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. Um, and the Bible says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. Now, friends, doesn't that just sound so familiar from where we are today, locked down in our houses? But the, the whole idea of this message tonight is to tell fear, you need to be locked up, not the children of God. And and with, with that said, I'm just going to pass on to Sonia, my precious wife here. And she's going to share a few things out of the book of Numbers, chapter 13. We're going to share a bit of history with you tonight, just to give you some context. Um, and then you're just going to see how we align this message up tonight. Um, I says over to Sonia. Exciting. All right, so um, we're going to start in the book of Numbers, um, giving us a bit of history and background about what happened. Um, so if you have time to read um, Numbers 13, verse 1 to 33, it would be great. We also uh, will be focusing on a scripture verse in Joshua, but let's start with Numbers. Um, so firstly, uh, when we read, um, we start reading Numbers, um, it, it tells us about Moses. Um, that got a word from God to send out 12 spies to Canaan. Um, so Moses picked 12 spies, um, but these weren't just any spies, they were leaders. He had to pick a, a leader from every tribe of Israel um, to go into the land of Canaan and to observe what was going on. And it's just important, um, as Sonia mentioned, that it's leaders, it's not just ordinary people, it picked leaders of every tribe. And it just shows you what, um, what heavy responsibility there is on leaders. Um, in verse 16, you'll read that uh, Moses called a young man, um, the son of Nun, Joshua, to accompany these um, spies. Um, in verse 16, we also read about Caleb from the tribe of from Judah. And at the end of the chapter, you'll see that that Judah was actually, oh, sorry, that you are from the tribe of Judah, that Caleb was actually the only guy that came with a positive response. Um, and very interesting to note that Jesus is also from the tribe of Judah. The line of the tribe, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's such a significance in that tribe and that Caleb came from that tribe. Um, and then obviously him and um, Joshua both. Um, but let's just go into the story now so then the story unfolds when the 12 spies are going into Canaan and they had a very very clear instruction from Moses they had to go spy the land and see what it was like in verse 17 were the people strong were they weak um, were there many people were there few people um, were, were, there, were there cities were there camps were they fortified strongholds um, was the land rich was the land poor um, were there any forests? Very interesting. I don't know why, but they wanted to know whether there were forests. And then in verse 22, um, um, sorry, and then in verse 22, they say that they saw the, um, the Anax. The Anax were massive, massive um, descendants um, from the, uh, they were the Nephilims um, that were about 2.75 meters tall. So these were really um, giant-like creatures that they found um, but they also came across the, the, the valley of um, Eshol and there they found these amazing fruit they found pomegranates they found grapes and um, these grapes were so big 
that it actually took two people to carry these grapes. So it was really juicy grapes, juicy, juicy no. grapes. And it was really fruitful. Um, when they returned, when these 12 spies returned um, to Moses and the congregation, they gave their feedback in verse 26. Um, and they responded as follow. The land was flowing with milk and honey. And we've heard that so many times. It's the land flowing with milk and honey. The people were very strong. The cities were fortified and large. And moreover, um, and moreover, the descendants, um, uh, they met the descendants of the Anax there. And like we mentioned previously, these were the Nephilims. And they were giant-like creatures. So they were really, really, really scared. But in verse 30 of chapter 13, Caleb responded with something positive. And I just want to read it to you because it's beautiful. Um, he said, and then Caleb quieted the people. So obviously there was an uproar and the people were making a noise and they were probably um, talking and fighting and screaming at each other. You never know. But Caleb quieted the people um, before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome. So obviously you can see that Caleb had a good identity. Mm. He, he knew who he mm. was and he knew that we can do this i can do this because of the courage that god has given us i'm being strong and courageous mm. we can take the land and he was being positive and um in verse 31 the leaders didn't respond like that at all um they said no 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 no, no. we cannot do this we do not agree with caleb it's not true they are much stronger than we are we are f far more um inferior than they are mm. This is not a good report. Yes, there's beautiful fruits and everything, but no, 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 we cannot do this. And and they saw themselves like grasshoppers. They said, we are like grasshoppers and they see us like grasshoppers. So their identity was not that of the same identity that Caleb had of being strong and courageous. Their identity was inferior and saying that we it's almost like we are the prey mm. and we are going to be devoured by the enemy. So it's just very interesting to see the different attitudes the attitude that Caleb and Joshua had and the attitude that the other 10 mm. leaders had and it's just very sad to think that the leaders responded in this way yeah. but then when we go to verse 14 it spoke it speaks about them being gripped in fear but they're also having a pity party and they were saying yes but we should have died in Egypt oh no 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 we should have died in the wilderness maybe we should go back to Egypt and that's almost like they wanted to go back to what they've already been set free from but it's very interesting when you read in chapter 14 verse 30 I just want to read that to you it's Caleb and Joshua's response but Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of ne Nephium who were among those who had spied out the land tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying the land we passed through to spy is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, the land that flows with milk and honey. So Caleb and Joshua had a, such a good identity and they knew that if God delights in us, he'll give it to us. If yeah. God delights in us, he'll take us through it. Yeah. If, if God is for us, who can be against us? Mm -hmm. And they they chose to focus on who they were and who they knew their God was. But the 10 spies just allowed fear to grip them. And the yeah. moment that fear gripped them, they were paralyzed. Yeah. Even though they saw the good, they saw the beautiful things, they saw the beautiful, the milk and the honey, they saw the promise that God mm. had for them. They were gripped, crippled and um completely struck down by fear that they couldn't in any way respond yeah because they allowed fear to overtake them they had the fear flu yeah so um it is so so obvious and um relevant what sonia sharing with, with us tonight about fear and i just want to summarize quickly on that on that scripture um or a piece that you shared um it's amazing to see how 
um, a 40 day journey from, from Canaan to Egypt turned into nearly 80 years. Um, they first took 40 years because they were just rebellious for sure. God. Yeah. And then now after this um, negative attitudes that they had, um, they had to spend approximately another 40 years wow. in the desert. Um, so a 40 day trip became an 80 year journey. Um, it's scary sure. to think about it simply because it's actually like fear based, you know, and the reason that we shared numbers um, chapter 13 with you guys is to, to show you what the outcome is if you are fear based, you know, if you're motivated by fear, this is the result. But um, I'm just going to leave that now and I'm just going to turn over to the book of Joshua. Um, and I just want to start with the, the positive side of it all now. And um, this is the reign of Joshua um, uh, as, as, as leader of Israel. Um, and it took over from Moses, as you guys know. So um, it all starts in jo Joshua chapter 1 um, when God commissioned him. And um, we know that Joshua had a different attitude. Um, you know, someone once said, your attitude determines your altitude. So basically, you know, it's how we think about things, it's how we respond about things that, that makes a huge difference. And in our walk with God, everything starts with our attitude. And we need to be passionate about Him. You know, we need to be positive about Him. You know, even if things is hard, we need to, to say, God, you are good and you are amazing. And we have a positive attitude in the midst of a negative situation, being positive with people. Now, now basically what happened to Joshua is God, first of all, gave him a promise in verse 3. He says, listen, um, and I just want to read this to you guys as well. In, in verse 3, he says the following, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. So God has given him a, 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 a word to stand upon, a, a firm word. Second, a yes, a, a word and a promise. The next thing that God gave him in verse 8, he, he gave him a clear instruction. And he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. So now God gives him this instruction. And then finally, God gives him encouragement in verse 9. He says, have I not commanded you, Joshua? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. These are three things that we are so desperate in need of today where we are. We need a promise and a word from God. We need a clear instruction from the Lord. And we need encouragement. If we want to conquer fear, those are the things that we need to adhere to. And, and, and obviously after Joshua received this precious free gift from God, he did something very profound. He became active. He wasn't passive. He, he reacted on what God told him. And in verse 11, um, the Bible says, um, uh, Joshua um, reacted and he became active in the sense that he told the people, listen guys, come together in three days. You guys are going to cross this river. You're going to possess this land. Yes, the water is there. Yes, you don't know how you're going to get free. But I'm telling you as a leader that we're going to go through this water and we're going to conquer the land. And this is so contrast with the leaders that we just heard about. You know, they were so negative. They were, they were, they were just going into the pity party, influencing the people in such a bad way. And here we've got the leader that say, listen, I don't know how we're going to get there. But I'm telling you guys, in three days, you have to be ready because we're going to pass through here. And we're going to do this. And we need this type of leadership. And I want to say that fear-based leadership leads at the end of the day to fear. Negative leaders brings fear. But a positive leader that Joshua that gives guidance and clarity leads to victory and success. And those are the type of, of leaders that we are in need with today as, as a church. We should be faith-based and not fear-based. Um, and, and basically, um, this is what Joshua did. Um, in chapter 2, we know the story how he just sent out two spies with specific instructions um, for, for Canaan. And the instructions, he says, go through the land, yes, but specifically, check out Jericho, guys. I need to know what's going on in that city. I need to know what's, what they're eating. I need to know what they're drinking. I need to know everything that you can find out about that, that city, Jericho. I mean, knew the spies, that, that, and they know that they went in there. And then, obviously, the king of Jericho found out about them and and we all know the story about Rahab um, and the prostitute and um, the harlot 
and and she took him in and and she she you know the story how she just hide him away from the soldiers and you know eventually she she lowered him down and and they fled the scene and so on but it's a very profound thing and i want you guys not to miss this tonight and uh, because the and she she let him go um she she lowered him down and and the bible says something about this before she actually let him go and it is so profound and i don't want you guys to miss this um she said to him listen um and the message says we are all afraid everyone feels hopeless in the city because we know God has given this land to you. Sure. So, see how the fear was now transformed from God's people in Numbers 13 to the inhabitants of, of Canaan. Yes. It was transferred into the hands of the enemy. So fear was given back to the enemy and released from God's people so at were, that very they moment. Were, they were really fearful. They were fearful. Wow. And, and I need you guys to see how this fear was transferred because it's vitally important to understand that, that you know, fear needs to be isolated. Um, Christians should not be isolated. Um, fear needs to be taken where it, where it belongs. And that's the pit of hell. And we need to deal with this fear. Um, um, everybody felt hopeless. And another version says, the terror of Israel fell upon us. The terror, that's fear, that came upon the inhabitants of Jericho sure. and of Canaan. And, and, and she came to a point where she actually begged them to save her life, to spare her life. So desperate was this woman um, about, about this man of God and about the tribe of, of Israel and, and what we call the Prince of God. That, that's what Israel means. Um, so on in return, to Joshua, you remember how these oaks responded to Moses, but the way these guys responded is completely different. And they said to Joshua the following words, and I, and I just quote verse 24, um, the Lord has delivered all the land into our hands. No, it didn't happen yet. They spoke it. They said the Lord already delivered this, the, the land into our hands. For indeed, existence. all the inhabitants of this country are faint hearted because of us. Now, wow, I don't know about you, but that gets me pumped and excited because I know these guys are faith-based and they've already, already won the battle with their mouths and with their faith and with the words that they spoke. They were positive people. They, they, they believed and trust God's promises for them. So they came back with this good report. They're not fear-based, but faith-based. Faith. And they, they lost the fear fluor. And, and if you think about what faith is, faith is, is the existence of things Hopefully, yes. evidence of things not seen. Yes, yes. They lost that fear flu completely. Mm -hmm. It was gone. So they were on a mission, and this mission was to take Jericho. The mission was to get those walls down. The mission was, there was no games left. There was no playing time left. They, the, the fear that kept them in the desert for 40 years too long needed to go down now, and they needed to inhabit it ASAP. And Joshua said to him, in three days, you're going to do that. So in chapter 3, verse 5, Joshua did another very, 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 very profound thing. He called the children of Israel together and he sanctified them. Listen, he sanctified them. He set them apart. He purified them. And I want to tell you in the season and time that we're living in right now, we need to get the sin out of our lives. We need to get go of the things that's not from God, the addictions, the things that we think is right and it's not right. We need to let go of those things and we need to purify ourselves again before Amen. our God and allow the blood Amen. of Jesus Amen. to cleanse us from all iniquity. God is coming back for a spotless bride. There mustn't be any stain on us. He sanctified his people. And then he called the, 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 um, the Levites and the priests with the Ark of the Covenant, which presents the presence of the Lord. And he called them. And then if you read chapter 3, a profound miracle happened. The minute that the priests put their feet to the Ark of the Covenant in the water, the water of the river Jordan stopped. And the Bible says that the children of Israel went through on dry land. Once again. Once again on dry again. land. They, they took a few rocks and they built something for the Lord for remembrance. But as the presence of God went before them, the water opened up and God made the way where he said, remember what Joshua said three days before? He said, you guys are going to go through the river. Three days from now, we're going to take this land. Mm -hmm. And so it was. And they were on the mission. And so they crossed through the river Jordan. Amazing. So... A great miracle occurred in chapter 3. I want to come in and I say, listen, just before God is going to crush fear, I want to let you know a miracle is on the way. 
Joshua was on his way to crush fear. He was on his way to crush this walls and this miracle happened. And you might feel today like you are surrounded by fear. But I say actually you are in the line for a miracle. You are in the line for the breakest, biggest breakthrough in your life. For the biggest thing that ever happened to you. You are in the line with the accounting of Jesus Christ. You don't have to fear anything. Because I tell you right now. Greater is he that's in you than him that's in the world. God has got it all worked out. But he needs faith based people. Faith in inspired people he cannot work with fear inspired people fear fear based people so in chapter 5 verse 1 we once again see how fear is now transferred from God's people to the enemy the king of the Amorites and the Amorites was very well known as big enemies of the of the Israelites the king of the Amorites replied and he said these words in verse 5 of chapter 1 verse 5 our hearts melted and there was no spirit left in us any longer because of the children of Israel. And don't tell me that in Numbers 13, 40 years before that, that the same people that stayed there moved out and didn't, didn't stay there anymore. This, is, was, this was the, the, the generation after that inhabitant generation. So those, those giants were still there. Those people were still there. And, and once they did not fear Israel, now they were trembling. Why? Because these guys were faith-based, they were on a mission, they had a strong leader, they had a purpose, and they were going to take the land back that God has promised for them. God is for us, friends. He's not against us. You need to know that today. God is in your battle. He's for you. Greater is He that's in you than Him that's in the world. We know how the story in chapter 6 unfolds. And I just want to read that, that scripture again in jo Joshua chapter, chapter 6. Let me start it off. Listen to this. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Esau. None went out and none came in. Why do you think that was the case? Because they were afraid. They were scared of Israel. They locked the gates. Nobody was allowed to go in or out. You see, the fear was inside the city. The fear was behind the wall. The fear was contained in the wall. The fear couldn't go out. The fear was locked in. It was in a locked-in period, that fear. And Joshua was after this. He was after that fear. He was after that thing that kept him 40 years too long in the desert. And he wanted to destroy the thing once and for all. So how did he do it? God gave him clear instructions. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, in verse 6, Take up the ark of the covenant, the presence of God. And let seven priests bear seven trumpets of rams and wounds before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed. And march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. And the Bible said they did the six days wow. once a, a, around the six, uh, days. The six days once once every day. So but so then easy. in verse number 15, but it came to pass on the seventh day, hear this, that they rose early in the morning about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, when the priest blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, Now shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction and all who are in it. And the Bible tells us those walls came tumbling down. And they were massive walls. Now friends, yeah. Those walls approximately were four meters, um, uh, two meters wide and four meters high. And they say that the towers were about 8.5 meters high. But these walls came tumbling down when the people of God shouted. I'm telling you, the walls in your life are about to fall as we speak. How? How do we conquer fear? How do we lock down fear and destroy fear? Mm. I'm just going to summarize this quickly question. for you. Number one. The right attitude. As we said, your attitude determines your altitude. If you look at fear today, if you look at this so-called coronavirus, 
I need to tell you, you have to have the right attitude as a child of God against this thing. And you tell, listen, this thing is not going to, God is going to give it over to me. God is going to conquer this thing. I'm not going to stand back. I, I, I'm going to go for this. I, I'm going to, I'm going to isolate this, 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 this disease and this fear in those walls. And I'm going to break those walls and I'm going to destroy this fear. Number two, God must give us a promise, a word like for Joshua. God has given us a promise. He's given us a word. He said to us, I will never leave you or forsake you. He said, no, fear not. Not, for I am with you. He said, greater is my spirit in you. He said that I will make you more than an overcomer. give you a spirit of fear, but of love and yes. the power of the Son. and through, through Jesus Christ, we have got so many words and promises. God has given us instructions, people. He said we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. He wants an active church like Joshua was active. He can't work with the passive church. We need to be active. We need to be out there in people. We need to bring the good hope. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We need to pray for the sick we need to spread the love of jesus christ into this generations and into this world we, we've got the instruction we've got encouragement god said to us listen i will not leave you god said to you no no temptation is too big for you to handle i will give you the outcome god has given us christian friends and brothers and sisters that can encourage each other and we can encourage each other even through these devotions and say listen we're going to be okay we're going to make this because we serve a big big god further Number five, Joshua sanctified his people. We need sanctification back in the church. We need the reverent fear of God to come back into the church family. And we need to be sanctified and cleansed and with the Spirit of God and washed by the blood of Jesus to be clean and pure because that will bring the presence of God back. That will bring the presence of God back into our lives, into our families, into our marriages, into our houses, into our churches, and into our communities and nations. We need that sanctification and presence of God and can we just cry out to God in this night and say Lord just bring us your presence we cannot live without your presence and with his presence came unity they were one unit Israel marched around those walls as a unit they shouted as a unit they were in one accord everybody was for the same purpose and as Christians we be in one accord against this virus we need to be in one accord in prayer and break these things in unity in the name of Jesus Christ and through the shout of praise those walls came tumbling down so what I'm here to tell you today brothers and sisters is as follow are you tonight fear-based or are you faith-based? Because if you're fear-based, you're going to be in the desert for 40 more years. But I'm telling you, if you're faith-based, your victory is around the corner. And God is going to break the walls of Jericho. He's going to isolate fear first. And then when he isolate that fear, then he's going to break these walls. And we're going to destroy that fear in the holy name of Jesus Christ. It brings me back to Benaiah. Benaiah actually came and he isolated that lion in the pit. Think about it. He isolated that lion. That lion couldn't run away. That lion could go nowhere and he slayed that lion. Now I'm telling you, God is breaking the walls down. These walls are about to fall if the church of God agree and shout together and say, yes, Jesus, amen and amen. Let's just pray together. And I want to tell you tonight, if you, if you, if you struggle with any form of fear, we just break it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against that fear. We come against any attack of fear in your life. And right now, Father, I pray that, that we will attack the fear first. And secondly, God, first, that He let us come and isolate that fear in the name of Jesus, Lord, and that the fear can be isolated so that the walls can break down and then we can destroy it. And Lord, right now, we step upon this fear in the name of Jesus Christ. We've not given us a spirit of fear. Love, power, and sound, my God. I pray that we will be faith-based people and that we will not be fear-based for one more second in the precious, precious name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for everyone that's listening to this devotion right now. And I pray for breakthrough upon breakthrough. Father, we break this coronavirus in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right now. Father, we stop it in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, for miracle upon miracle upon miracle, for salvation upon salvation upon salvation, in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, every person that might feel sickness in their body, we break that sickness in the name of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we all say, Amen.
So friends, just before we go, I would like to, Sonia, to, to um, give you a bit of details. If you've got testimonies, if you want prayer, um, she's just going to give you the details quickly that you can, can link on. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if you've got any testimonies, we would love for you to email us at info at relentlesspursuit.org.za and we'd love to hear from you. If you'd love to hear any testimonies, love to hear any stories. And um, if you've got any questions, we'd love to um, be able to answer them for you. So be blessed and have a fabulous week. Love you guys. Till next time. Stay blessed and stay faith-based. Amen. Amen. Bye.